So I'm going to talk briefly about the nature of the difficulties that call for the kinds of solutions that the AMBIT programme has tried to, to develop. AMBIT in general has been developed to target some of the most vulnerable, some of the most excluded, some of the most uh, non-conventionally help-seeking populations. And if you like, their response to our offers to help is often one of rejection. And my apologies for the, for the language in this slide. Many people who work with clients in this thing would know that they don't tend to say please. So one of the ways that we might describe this is that these are a client group whose kind of doorway to letting in help is closed. Uh, the technical term is that they have what we call epistemic hypervigilance and we'll describe that in a later film. That's not the whole story. Targeting this group means targeting a group of people who don't have a single problem, however severe. In terms of their development, the last 100 metres of the runway as the aeroplane takes off is a good analogy. The aeroplane's going at high speed, it's starting to kind of make the corrections, and at the end of the runway there are real things. Literacy, emotional kind of competence, being able to fall in and out of love, to do a job interview. Um, and at the same time, as they're trying to get all of these skills under their belt, these young people are also faced with a world that's starting to step away. They're starting to be expected to be independent, to be able to live without the level of support that much younger children require. And the, the nature of these complicated problems is that one single issue is never the issue. The issue is this clustering, this clumping of maybe developmental difficulties, early trauma, neglect, abuse, homelessness, family breakdown, educational failure, beginnings of crime, mental health problems come together. So it's this heavy kind of burden of the sort of accumulated rubble of different difficulties that weigh down the trajectory of this aeroplane as it tries to kind of clear the obstacles. And that's the nature of the work. Now, AMBIT's been developed by not just a set of experts and a reading of the evidence, but a coming together of evidence and practitioners, people actually doing the work. And over the last decade or more, AMBIT has been developed as this, what we would call a co-production. And some of the key problems that people have talked about again and again are as follows. First of all, it's difficult because the offers of help that may be well-intended, they may be evidence-based, they're often rejected. Or even when they're accepted, they don't work as well as we'd hoped they would. Secondly, workers doing this work talk about feeling quite anxious and then feeling very ashamed of feeling anxious, as though that's a mark of them not being good enough at this work. Thirdly, because of all the different problems, the complexity, they involve lots of different professionals, lots of different teams and agencies. And that gets difficult, and we have a word for that, we call it disintegration. And this is problematic. We can often end up mirroring the kinds of families that the young people or clients that we've worked with have grown up in, where mum and dad argue either behind closed doors or right in front of the young person. And this is deeply unhelpful. And finally, people doing this work find it's very difficult to adapt, to find a way around the brick walls that they, they, they find. It's easier to keep doing things, because at least we know what to do, than to try and find better and more adaptive, more helpful ways of working. So, AMBIT is all about trying to make sense of these difficulties and that's where this theory that we describe in another video uh, called mentalising comes in. That's the, if you like, the axle that carries the wheel, carries the load. Here's the difficulty and in the midst of that difficulty the worker can often feel like one of those toys from the 1970s and 80s called a weeble. It wobbles. 
You're always out of balance. You're always preoccupied with the client's failure to kind of do what I'm trying to tell them to do, or the, the, the unhelpfulness of my, my efforts, or I'm preoccupied with worrying about another member of my team, or uh, I'm preoccupied about another team or another agency that seems to be undermining what I'm doing. We're always out of balance. And very briefly, what the AMBIT project has developed is a number of ways of making sense of these difficulties. That rejection and mistrust in our clients is actually probably something that's adaptive for that young person. They've maybe grown up in a, in a, in a context which it makes sense not to trust a helper because that helper may exploit, humiliate or abuse rather than actually help. It makes sense that this work should make us anxious. And actually, if we recognise that feeling ashamed of my anxiety can make me feel less like seeking help from a client, from a colleague, uh, that's an important shift. Similarly, on the other side, it makes sense that disintegration is the natural resting state of these very complicated multi-agency networks. And finding ways to address that disintegration, to minimise the ways that pulls things apart and creates unhelpful conflict is helpful. And it makes sense to think of learning and being able to adapt and develop better ways of working, that that's an absolute essential rather than some luxury added extra that we can fit in when we have time. We can't afford not to learn during this work. So all AMBIT is, really, is the application of this theory mentalising in these four areas of work. Working with your client, with your team, with the wider networks, and then as a group of practitioners, trying to learn and adapt and find better ways of working. Thank you.